we're going to do some exercises now. And for this type of course, for any accounting course, any, in fact, any course with numbers, uh, you can't do well without doing problems, without going to the problems and doing them. You simply can't. You can't just read the chapter and say, I'm, I'm just going to ignore the problems. In fact, you would be further ahead as a learner doing the problems at the end of each chapter and not reading the chapter if you were going to eliminate one of them. I don't suggest that. I say you do both. But if you were going to eliminate one, I'd eliminate the reading and do the problems. That's where, that's where you're going to get frustrated and go, I don't understand. And it forces you to go back and read. Aha! See? So let's start. We'll start with exercise uh, 2.1. And here we're classifying manufacturing costs. And uh, it is learning objective number one if you're following along. And if you have the 10th edition, you're on page 49. So. We're classifying manufacturing costs, so before we go any further, let's see if we can remember what our manufacturing costs were. Let's uh, write this down, manufacturing costs. And there were three of them. Can you remember what they are? We'll just put them in initials here. We have direct material, we have direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. And we have non-manufacturing costs, and we have two big categories there. We have selling and we have admin. And we know that our manufacturing costs are called product costs. We'll write that down. And our non-manufacturing costs are called period costs. Now, you see what I've done? I've answered every question. As I read each of the questions, none of them should stump me now because there's my little cheat sheet on the corner, right? Well, let's find out if that's true. Uh, let's read the question and see what it's asking us. The costs below all relate to Sounds Good, a company based in Alberta that manufactures high-end audio equipment such as speakers, receivers, CD players, turntables, and home theater systems. The company owns all of the manufacturing facilities. That's important to know. I don't know why, but it's important. They own that. Buildings and equipment, but rents the space used by the non-manufacturing employees. So right away, out of the question, I know that the manufacturing employees are over here, the non-manufacturing employees are over there in another building. That's good because any costs associated with any of the buildings are easy to divide. Now, if the administrative sales and production staff were all in one building, well, then now I've got to get into details about, well, how much, how much of the square footage is, is attributable to manufacturing, how much of it is attributable to front office. When they're in separate buildings, costs are easy to track. So let's go. For each cost, indicate whether it would most likely be classified as direct labor, direct material, manufacturing overhead, marketing and selling, or admin. There's our five big costs. Number one, depreciation, taxes, and insurance on the manufacturing facility. Well, right away, we know it's a manufacturing cost. We know it, 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 it's over here. It's one of the three, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Now, you may not know right away what it is, but watch this. Is it direct material? You can read that and go, no, I, that's not direct material. Well, is it direct labor? You'd read it and go, well, no, it's not direct labor. Well, what, what's left, right? If you don't know what it is, you can certainly eliminate it by saying, I know it's a manufacturing cost, and I know it's not labor or materials. So it must be overhead. Number two, rent on the office space used by the non-manufacturing staff. Well, it's non-manufacturing. So it's either selling or administrative. And when we read it, it doesn't really tell us. It doesn't really give us a hint as to, because in the non-manufacturing facility, it says non-manufacturing staff, you have both sales and administrative. So if you put down selling, I'll take it. If you put down admin, I'd take it. The question says it would most likely be classified as what? Well, you could put down selling or admin, or selling and admin, They'll, since they both share the facility, they must split the cost somehow when it's apportioned out to each department. Who knows how? In the meantime, I'm perfectly okay with that. We don't have enough information. We have enough information to say that it's a non-manufacturing cost. Number three, salaries paid to the employees who produce the audio equipment. Well, that's a manufacturing cost. And since they produce the audio equipment, I'm assuming this is the labor that actually works on it, direct labor. Number four, cost of the glue used to fasten the company's logo to the grill used on all of its speakers. Well, glue. 
uh, we buy a big tube of glue and we use it in a whole bunch of applications so we can't really trace the glue to every specific product so we know it's material but it's indirect material not direct so if it's not direct material then it must be overhead anything indirect is overhead so MOH manufacturing overhead number five the cost of online advertising that's not a manufacturing cost so our choices are selling cost or administrative cost it's online advertising so in in the very definition of advertising right it must be a selling cost number six salaries paid to the accounting employees well they're not manufacturing so we know it's not a manufacturing cost that eliminates three of our choices we only have two left selling or admin well it says accounting it doesn't say sales so we know it's admin look how easy this is right if we don't know what it is right away we can use logic to get rid of some of the other cost categories that we know it's not number seven salary paid to the production manager who supervises the manufacturing for all products well it's the manufacturing it says it in there twice production and manufacturing so we know it's a manufacturing cost so we have three choices materials direct material direct labor or manufacturing overhead so let's try to eliminate some of them is is the salary a direct material no so it's either direct labor or manufacturing overhead is it direct labor well the question to ask ourselves here is can you trace it to a specific product or, or, or job well it's the supervisor the supervisors are oversees many many people and doesn't really touch is not involved in the production line as the supervisor so it is labor but it's indirect labor so we would call it manufacturing overhead number eight cost of the plastic used for turntable dust covers now here's the deal I know what a turntable looks like but I'm betting that many of you are probably looking at this question going, what's a turntable and well you know it'd be like asking me what an 8-track player is I remember hearing about them but I can't remember what they look like well a turntable has a little plastic cover over the top and it just lifts up and down like a lid you lift it up you put your album down and you close the lid so that no dust gets on it uh, and that's what that is so they are traceable to each specific unit so this is a direct material now if you would have read this question and you would have answered I don't know what a turntable is I don't know what this is it sounds like it's material but I can't tell if it's direct material or indirect I would have taken that I would have said yeah okay that's fine it's an unfair question because it presupposes that you know what the hell a turntable is and well I think anybody under the age of 25 now probably has never seen a turntable number nine bonuses paid to sales staff for meeting their monthly sales goal well, it says selling right in there twice sales staff sales goal so if you call this a manufacturing costs I gotta shoot you I mean I got no choice I'll shoot you in the foot you'll live but I gotta shoot you uh, obviously this is a selling cost so we could just put that in right now number 10 salary paid to the manager of the human resources department well we know that's not a manufacturing cost it's a non-manufacturing so our choices are simple is it a selling cost or an administrative cost well it doesn't say sales in there anywhere it says the human resource department HR that's got to be admin so we'll put down admin do you see how easy this is I took long to go through it because I'm guiding I'm not just answering them what's the point of answering them I may as well just hand you a piece of paper say here you go just guide you through it but overall the logic isn't that difficult let's move on to our next question we're going to do exercise 2.2 and exercise 2.2 is going to cover off our next learning objective which is learning objective 2 for those following along in edition 10 I'm on page 50 let's read our question classification of costs as period or product cost it's asking us so before we go any further let's uh, let's recall what we have we have period costs and we have product costs can you remember the difference that's right period costs are non manufacturing costs product costs are manufacturing costs and non manufacturing we have selling expense and we have admin that's it in manufacturing we have direct material direct labor and manufacturing overhead there we go that's it and all it's asking us to do is classify costs as either period or product it's not asking us to go any deeper so let's read the question suppose 
You have a summer job at Remotely Speaking, a company that manufactures sophisticated, portable two-way radio transceivers for remote-controlled military reconnaissance missions. Now that's a really specific question. You read that and you think there was no need to be that specific, I think. The company, which is privately owned, has approached a bank for a loan to help finance its tremendous growth. The bank requires financial statements before approving such a loan. You have been asked to help prepare the financial statements and are given the following list of costs. Required. Classify the above costs as either product or period. Well, here's what we're going to do. Here's how it's nice and simple. We're going to go through this list and we're going to ask ourselves one simple question. Is this a manufacturing cost? If the answer is yes, it's a product cost. Stop right there. If the answer is no, it's a period cost. Stop right there. That's how simple this is going to be. So let's have a look at, uh, at what this looks like, and we'll use a nice, happy color, purple. Number one, depreciation on the salespeople's car. Manufacturing cost? No. That means it's period. See how simple that was? Let's go to number two. Rent on equipment used in the factory. Manufacturing cost? Yes, it says factory. So, product. We don't even have to think about it. We just have to move on. Number three, lubricants used for machine maintenance. That sounds like a manufacturing cost to me. Indirect, but still, it's a manufacturing cost. Salaries of personnel who work in the finished goods warehouse. Ah, 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 what do we do here? What do we do? What do we do? Finished goods. Some of you are probably tempted to say, aha, there's a product there. That's a product cost, but let's be careful. Think about a merchandising company. It buys something, boxes come in the back door, and they go out on the shelf. And we have a cost, an invoice cost, of buying that product. Well, no matter how many times we move it around the store, it doesn't change the fact that we paid a certain amount for that product. We can't keep increasing the cost of our inventory just because we move it around. Well, it's the same with manufacturing. Once it leaves work in process and enters finished goods, it's as if it were purchased. It's as if it was a merchandising company, right? Because remember, what comes out of finished goods inventory is called the cost of goods manufactured. And they go into finished goods. Now, once they're there, if you keep moving them around, you can't keep raising the value of your inventory just because you're moving boxes around. So it can't be a product cost because we can't add it to the cost of the product. So if you had read the chapter carefully, you would have found that as soon as the product enters the finished goods warehouse, that's it. It's no longer a product cost. All costs of the finished goods warehouse and shipping and receiving, all that is a period cost. So see, you learn even more when you do the exercises. Number five, soap and paper towels used by the factory workers at the end of the shift. Well, it's in the factory. It's supporting the factory workers. So it is a product cost. So we'll put down product cost. It, it's in manufacturing overhead. We didn't, didn't, that's not what it was asking us, though. We just had to stop at product. We didn't have to classify it any further. Number six, factory supervisor salary. Well, it says factory right in there. Product cost. Number seven, heat, water, and power consumed in the factory. It says factory right there. So it's a manufacturing cost, so it's a product cost. Number eight, materials used for boxing company products for shipment overseas. And it says in brackets, units are not normally boxed. Well, if they're not normally boxed, that means this boxing must be going on after they're built and in the finished goods warehouse, which means it's a shipping cost. It's not a product cost, it's a period cost. Again, you didn't have to know about shipping and all that. You just had to know, you just had to answer the question, is this a manufacturing cost? If the answer is no, it must be a period cost. Number nine, advertising costs. Well, that's not a manufacturing cost. So I know right away it must be a period cost. Number 10, workers' compensation insurance for factory employees. Well, that's a cost of making something. That's a product manufacturing cost, so it must be a product cost. 11. Depreciation on chairs and tables in the factory lunchroom. Ah, another tricky one, right? This is not in, it's, it's in the factory, but it's the factory lunchroom. It has, the lunchroom has nothing to do with making the product, right? Well, no, we wouldn't call it direct material or direct labor, but we would call it manufacturing overhead. It's in the factory, 
The workers got to have lunch somewhere. You got to provide them with facilities, which means it's part of the cost of making that product. You can't just say, look, there's no lunchroom. You got to go sit outside on the road. It's a product cost. Number 12. The wages of the receptionist in the administrative in, in uh, administrative offices. Well, that's not a manufacturing cost, which means it's a period cost. See how simple this is? Nice and easy. A couple more. Stick with me. Cost of leasing the corporate jet used by the company executives. Nice. What uh, business are they in? Oh, yes, yes. Remote control military reconnaissance. Portable two-way radio transit. I got to get into that business. They got a corporate jet. Well, that's not a manufacturing cost. It's certainly not a manufacturing cost, right? So we would call that a period cost. Number 14, the cost of renting rooms at a British Columbia resort. Wow, these people are living it up good, right? Uh, for the annual sales conference. Well, it says sales conference in there. This has nothing to do with making the product and everything to do with selling it. So it is a period cost. 15, the cost of packaging the company's product. Well, now think about that. Earlier, we, ca we had some packaging, and we said that's not a product cost. It's a period cost because that's just packaging the goods once they're finished for shipping. But this says packaging the company's product. Now think about it this way, just to sort of give you an idea. We can buy a box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes, and it comes in a box. We can go on the shelf, and we can buy a box. It has a rooster on the cover. Right? Let's see if I can draw a rooster like that. There we go. There's our Kellogg's Corn Flakes. We can buy a box. We don't go buy a whole bunch of Corn Flakes and stick it in a bag and bring it up to the cash. We actually buy it in the box. So that's part of the cost. But when Kellogg ships Corn Flakes uh, to the store, it doesn't just ship one box it puts a whole bunch of these little boxes uh, in, in, inside a bigger box. So there may be uh, uh, 48 of them packaged in here. This is the product cost. This bigger box would be called the period cost. Why? Because the big box is what we need to ship all the little boxes. The little boxes are just part of the fact that, look, if I'm going to buy cereal, it better be in a box, right? So number 15 says the cost of packaging the company's product. And if it's packaging the product, it sounds like a product cost to me, not a period cost. It didn't say the cost of shipping. It says the cost of just packaging the product. So there we go. That's exercise 2.2.